those. Now, I find that really kind of interesting because the way God loves me is kind of different than the way most people talk about love. You see, God chose me. And because he chose me, he said, I love you. And because he loves me, he demonstrated his love towards me in that while I was still a sinner, he died for me. He proved his love by the actions he made after the choice he made. But he chose to love me. And the interesting thing is that most of his choice in loving me had nothing to do with me. Seriously. As a matter of fact, it had all to do with him and very little to do with me. He didn't look at me and say, well, you know, I know what you could become. No. He didn't look at me that way. Or he said, you know, I've got this wonderful plan for your life. If you just come to me, you know, and I'll give you, oh, such a marvelous thing. Rings on your fingers and bells on your toes so you'll have music wherever you go. Nice and shiny. No. He didn't choose me because he would decide that I was such a fitting example of his grace that in his mercy and all of his wonderful being that he is, he decided, oh, well, I just, you know, because Michael is, I choose him. No. As a matter of fact, he just chose me because he chose me. That's all. Pure and simple, God chose me. And God chose to love me. Because he chose to love me, that's why he chose me because he made the decision to love me. His decision wasn't based on emotion. His decision was based on choice. And that's what love is. You see, love is a choice. God decided to love me. God decided to give me that love. God demonstrated his love to me by his son dying for me. But I chose to follow that love because he chose to love me. It's not an emotional feeling that I go by. It's rather a decision that I made to follow, love, and serve my God. Now, when I met my wife, and I've been divorced. I mean, I've told that people that before, but maybe somebody's going to be shocked to go, Oh no, you've been divorced? That's the unpardonable sin. <laughs> no, for some people, the unpardonable sin is staying married. <laughs> God forbid that I said that, but it's true. <laughs> and some of you know it. <laughs> Holy cow, what were you doing getting married in the first place? <laughs> God knows, you know, because you're really messed up, you know, if you're committing sin while you're married. But the point is this. When I chose my wife, I looked at her and I said, look, God is the third party in our marriage. God is the third part of us being together. Our relationship has to be founded in some point in time on Him and that if we choose to follow Him, then we have to observe what He tells us to do. And so you can choose this day to serve the Lord your God. And while you're under my care, while you're under my covering, while you're in my household, then you will be covered by the grace God has given me. My blessing will be upon you. You will be under, so to speak, my grace and mercy that God has given me because I am saved and you're not. You see, when I met my wife, she wasn't saved. Oh no! It's the unpardonable sin again. <laughs> no, it's not. Some of you, you know, if you admit it from the Jesus movement, a lot of these pastors, you know, hey, guess what? Their wives were saved before they were. <laughs> Some of them. <laughs> we won't talk about which ones. You zip the lippa. It's up to them to tell. But the point is this. Again, I chose my wife. I prayed. I made decisions. I based it upon my personal relationship with God, but I chose her. I selected her. I decided based upon the choice God had made for me that this was the woman that I would live with for the end of my days. And so when I chose her, I told her, I said, look, I have been in love with lots of women. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, you couldn't have loved many women. Oh, yeah, man. Anytime some woman walks by. Wow. Did you see that woman? They're everywhere. 
I was a poet. I was an emotional being. I was full of feelings, nothing more than feelings. And so I fell in love regularly. I fell in love with my fantasies, my idealisms, my romance. I was a romantic. I could estranged love from afar, unrequited love, oh God, just to touch the very fingertip or the very hand of that person that, oh, I feel chills running up my spine. Really? That's love? What for one kiss? Oh, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. But don't let me say I love you. <laughs> After all, counting the ways is a lot easier than saying I love you. Poetry is wonderful in the sense that it makes idealism out of reality rather than reality make the idealism true. And so I found in my long experience of falling in love and out and in and out and doing all the wrong things with love, about love, and discovering that, you know what, God is love and the rest of it isn't love. We can call it something else if you want to. Like, you know, because I, I love Pepsi, but guess what? It's probably like rather than love. But the point is, my choice for my wife was based upon my decision-making process. And I said, honey, and it's not honey boo-boo, sorry. <laughs> Yuck. But honey, I can love anybody. I choose to love who I do. I choose to invest my intimacy with a certain number of people. I choose to be transparent with some people. I choose to serve my God because He loves me and God is love and so that love that I have inside pours out to everyone in the world. But there's someone that I choose to love and I choose you. And I thought that was like, you know, the culmination of the most religious profound thing and statement that I can make in the world. It took me five years to live that one down. Because <laughs> women don't really want to hear that love is a choice. They want to hear that love is a feeling. Because feelings are, after all, what people are craving for. And my feelings all came fulfilled the moment I got saved. I had this, wow, splish splash. It was taking a bath. And it was in the emotions that God had given me through devotions. You know, I mean, God had just loved me. And boom, ha, well, praise the Lord. Oh. You know, and I was like one of those. Jesus freaks. But there was still always something missing, and it tripped me up in the end, you know, or in the end, in the early days of my Christian walk. But in those emotions and following the emotional roller coaster ride, wow, it was fun, terrifying at times, you know, up and down and all around and twisties, you know, kind of spinning. And you know, kind of enjoyed thrill seeking and thrill rides for a while. After a while, once I'd thrown up a few times, you know, gotten sick from it, I realized, isn't there something more to this love thing than this? God chose to demonstrate his love towards me in that while I was still a sinner, he saved me. And so I knew there was something more to love than just, you know, kind of like this feeling thing that I kind of went, up and down and up and down and whoa, all around going with emotion rather than devotion. So my wife, God bless her, fell in love with me. Why? I have no idea except God did. <laughs> but somehow she had not experienced love like most people had experienced love. Her idealism of love had been really devastated by bad relationships and bad marriages because, quite frankly, they abused, confused, and used her. Whether they'll admit it or not, or whether she will, I don't know. But when she got saved, she began this process of healing, and not feeling, but healing of her emotions. This discovery and uncovering of the sensitive person that God intended her to be all along, that God wanted to take the kernel of the seed and break it open and begin to put roots down so that the love that she has, while everyone was aware of her love, 
was never fed by anything because there was no root to it. There was nothing that it was founded upon. It was just whatever anyone put in or took from her life and herself. And so she was raped emotionally, so to speak, of the reality of what life was meant to be. And so when she met me, she got saved. And after she got saved, we got married. And when we got married, we began the process of discovering what love really is. Now, I knew, because I had already been through lots of studies, lots of teachings, lots of devotions, lots of emotions, lots of this and lots of that. We put in this, we put in that, we sprinkle a little salt and bingo! Put in the wealth of wisdom and experience and God makes a stew <laughs> and he puts in you. And boy, was it some tough times getting started. But the reality of her life was such that she chose to stay with me. Why? I don't know. Woo! Yay! And I chose to stay with her. I chose to love her. I chose her because I decided to. I had decided that when I met her, what I told her was that I wanted someone to grow old with. I said, oh, you'll get saved. I said, you'll, you know, you'll discover this and discover that and you'll grow in this and grow in that. But I said, you know, that's going to be your personal relationship with God. You're going to have to develop this, you know, a lot on your own. I said, I'll kind of point you in the right direction, steer you, you know, kind of give you some hints, you know, but hey, <laughs> yeah, I don't want somebody in my shadow, you know, I don't want, you know, I'm, you, you're not my slave, you know, and you're definitely not my, uh, my soulmate, you know, or whatever. You're a person I chose to love like God chose to love me. And I'll lay down my life for you, just like Jesus laid down his life for you. But I want you to know that I want someone to grow old with. I want someone to share the memories with. I want someone to be there and to care when I need someone. And I'll be there and care when you need someone. Because really, I can't do it of myself, and neither can you. But God in the midst of us, because there's two or more gathered, there I am in the midst. God will be with us, and God will be in us and God will reveal himself to us. If you choose to follow him and reveal yourself to him rather than to me. I said, because the love that you have is wrapped up in a selfish kind of desire to receive rather than to give. And until you get to that place, I said, I know you're a giving person, but I said, you know, you, you got a lot of kind of like baggage and issues that God's going to deal with the rest of your life. And eventually they'll disappear, you know, in the salvation of God taking us home to be with him. But I said, for now, I can be with you and share with you and care for you and allow you the environment to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and of his Father in heaven and to feel and know the Holy Spirit in a way that you've never known him before. But a lot of it will have to do with you and you will suffer consequences for what you've done in the past as well as what you do in the present and what you'll do in the future. But those things will go through together. And so the reality of choice was mine to make. I chose her with who she was, as she was, the way she was, knowing full well that my choice would be my accountability. And I'll stand before God, praise the Lord, <laughs> going, yeah, da, 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 da. And I like, and I told my wife this, that I get the privilege of having you in my life for a season. And at the end of that life that I have with you, I will lift you up to God Almighty and present you to my Father in Heaven who loves you so much more than I do. I will give you to Jesus every day of my life because He is in the midst of us. And I will walk with God humbly, serving Him more than I serve you because though I love you he's first in my life and if the decision ever come between you and my Lord and my God you're gone and so those were probably challenges at one point in time for my wife to kind of make you know she had to kind of like you know kind of get this all sorted out and praise the Lord she did but the only way she could have is because God chose her. While she was yet a sinner, God chose her. While she was yet unborn, God wrote her name in the book of life. While she was yet still unfashioned or even a gleam in her parents' eyes, 
God wrote her name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and God designed her life to be made conformable to my life, that in God's timing, God would put our lives together for His glory to accomplish His purpose for His reason. So, because He chose her, He directs her, and He chose her for me. Now, there are a lot of people that are kind of going, well, you know, I'm just waiting for God's choice. You know, I'm just kind of waiting for God to choose, you know. And, well, you know, hey, <laughs> okay. You may go through a divorce, you know, because believe it or not, you know, I understand that kind of thinking. And you know what? I did the same thing until finally I got married, you know. And I went, hey, you know what? <laughs> this was the wrong choice. <laughs> because you make the wrong choice. God will destroy what he has not chosen. Let no man put asunder what God has put together. But if God hasn't built the house, the laborer labors in vain. And guess what? When the storms of life come, kaboom! Explosion time. And you'll go through emotions. And your devotion to God will be the only thing left to you. And you'll have to walk with God in the reality of you suffer the consequences of your sin? Yeah, you do. You reap what you sow, and you get forgiven for it. But you move on. You don't sit there and go, Oh, well, I'm divorced now. It's over. Can't serve the Lord. Can't be in the ministry. I can't do this. I can't do that. Because I've got this weakness in my heart. You know, I'm kind of like... Emotional. Oh! No kidding. But once you deal with God in the choices you've made and allow Him to make the choices with you, then you choose to let God give you wisdom in the choices you make. The footsteps of the right, the direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are directed of the Lord. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. He puts them in place. He orders them out step by step along the way that he should go. And oftentimes, I've seen in ministries and pastors and elders and deacons and you name it, whatever it is, priest, prophet, king, you know, and they really just do the best they can and pray that it's blessed and Jesus takes care of the rest because that's what grace is. Grace is that covering of gravy over your life because believe it or not, underneath it's kind of messy. <laughs> You know, you were mad. you were like a big potato, you know, that was growing in the ground, you know, and you needed to be mashed, you know, to become soft, you know, pliable, and throw a little butter in, you know, a little salt, you know, a little bit of pepper, you know, kind of, you know, you kind of, and then, even though it looks nice and soft, it still had to cover with gravy, <laughs> you know, yeah, mashed potatoes and gravy, and that's you, because as a potato, you weren't much, but God chose you. And God chose to love you. And God chose to forgive you. And God chose to make you into the image of His incorruptible Son. And God chooses whom He uses. And God chooses whom He loves. And He loves the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. So God demonstrated His love. And God demonstrates love in that love was His choice to give you. And he does that through the demonstration of his action in his son. He shows and reveals what love really is. And it's not just self-sacrifice, which sounds good, you know, but, you know, people can be doormats. But love was the obedience of the son to do not my will, but thy will be done. And that's why I love my wife. It's not my personal decision only to make, but it's my obedience to God in faithfulness to His choice that He makes, that I have chosen with Him to love this woman that I call my wife, Lori, and that she will receive the she will be the recipient of my joy, my peace, my love, and even my freedom if she ever decided like, hey, God forbid, you know, but should she ever decide, you know, like, hey, you know what, I'm out of here. Praise the Lord, you know, as the Lord leads you, God bless you. Now, personally, I don't think you're making the right choice. <laughs> but, hey, if God's telling you, you know, then I'm not going to stop you. But you're always open to come back. Because 
you can't bind someone in the oaths or swearing, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. And sure enough, they lie. You can't bind a soul that's eternal to you. You can't claim a soul that God has created for you. You can't take someone and make them into the image of what you want them to be. You have to give them the freedom to follow God and serve their Lord even as you are doing. Because marriage is the third part. And the reality of what marriage is is a covenant of love. It's the demonstration <clears throat> of love that God has for the world. That's what marriage is. So when you see divorce, yeah, of course. God hates divorce because he hates that misrepresentation of his love. Love was a choice. Why did you choose something else? Stupid? <laughs> love is God's choice to reveal to the world who he is, what he is, and how he is. That's why he gave us marriage. Not just that the two shall become one, but that it's not good that man should be alone because God is not alone. God has his son and he has his spirit. God is tripartite, three parts, three persons, separate, though, together, whatever. Elohim, Adonai, whatever you want to call him. Echad, you know, in one. God is one, and yet he's Father, Son, and Spirit. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so, knowing that, he's never alone. He's always not alone. But man, when he was alone, God said it wasn't good. And you know that too. So, when you finally figure out that love is a choice, then you realize that at any point in time, any time at all, whether up or down, on a roller coaster ride, going up and down and kind of all around and doing one of these things and going like this and going like that and going like this and going like that. Whatever you're doing, emotionally, that's not cutting it. Devotionally, love is a choice. It's a choosing to do what the Holy Spirit has already put in you. And it's choosing to let that out in a certain direction. That's what love is. Love is the direction of choice, of what the fruit of the Spirit is, of what God is. And that choice that God said is that He loves the world. So, really, your choice is to let the love flow. Like a mountain spring and let your love grow to all living things and let your love show. And you'll know what I mean. It's the reason. I mean, really, that song is pretty close to Scripture. <laughs> because God is the reason. And Jesus is the reason for the season, you know, so to speak. But without the cliches, and going back to Scripture to say that God is love. And that's the bottom line, is that you let God out of you when you love. You let God reveal himself when you love. When you make the choice to love, then you have become God in you, God through you, and God to you. For he will flow through you with his own presence, purpose, and design as you realize that love is your choice to let God be who he is. And you just be kind of like the channel through which he works. God chose me because he did. And that's it. He can do whatever he chooses to do. And whom God choose and whom God chooses he uses. And since God so loved the world, pardon me, but he uses the world. I pray that you are a revelation of God's choice by being the object of God's love. And that's what God is. God is love and God chooses to love. <laughs>